Okay, so today we are looking at insertion sort, which is the final of the three bubble merge and insertion sorting algorithms. Quick word search, I'll pause, you can pause the slide, spend a little bit of time if you want to find all of those phrases or words. So again, uh, just to kind of reiterate, we're looking for bubble merge and insertion, and today we're looking at insertion sort. And again, the requirements are the same as they have been beforehand. Uh, slight difference with this one, you don't need to remember the code, but recognizing the algorithm or the pseudocode for it would help. So an insertion sort is again, fairly straightforward algorithm to understand. Uh, it's easy to implement, but it can be really inefficient. It's, it's equally as inefficient as a bubble sort. So just considering that as a, a, an option when it comes to actually looking at sorting data. So an insertion, uh, insertion sort works by taking elements from an unsorted list and then placing them into the sorted list. But when it's placing it into the sorted list, it's comparing with the items in that already sorted list to find out where it should be inserted. And I'll show you this in um, a, an example, which will make this clearer. So again, the same list that we've used for all of the sorting algorithms, three, one, four, and two, is our unsorted list. And we start with our unsorted list on the right. And you can see that the first element from this list forms the start of our sorted list. So our sorted list at this point has one element, which is just the number three. We would then look at the next element in our unsorted list, in this case, the number one. We would make a comparison to see if one is greater than three or one is less than three. It doesn't matter which way around it is as long as it's inserted in the correct position. So in this case, one is not greater than three and therefore one gets inserted before the number three, which means our sorted list is now one and three, whilst our unsorted list remains as four and two as the leftover data. As we move on, this time, we're now going to start to introduce the number four to our sorted list. And this is where it becomes apparent how inefficient this method of sorting can be. So we're going to compare to see if four is greater than one. It is, and therefore we move on through our list to see if four is greater than three. It is, and therefore we insert the number four here. Now, obviously, if this was a much data, much larger data set, and we would end up having, for example, a thousand numbers, potentially we could have to go through every item in our sorted list to add in all of the new record, uh, new data. And this can be particularly time consuming. This is where obviously the inefficiency comes in. It's not so obvious when we've only got a small data set like this. However, the larger the data set, the more challenging or the more inefficient uh, it will be. Again, two greater than one. Yes, it is. So we move, is two greater than three? No, it isn't. And therefore we insert the two into our list here. There are no further unsorted elements and therefore we can demonstrate and prove that our list is then sorted. So the merge sort algorithm, so element one is sorted in the sorted list. The rest of the elements are in unsorted list. We compare the first elements in the unsorted list to each element in the sorted list. If it is smaller, put it in front of that element, move the others along. Else if it's larger, compare with the next. Else if there are no more elements in the sorted list, put it in the final position. And we repeat that until all of the unsorted list has been merged with the sorted list. Here is the pseudocode for a insertion sort. Again, I've annotated that. You're welcome to read through that. And again, as per the previous sorting algorithms, you've got the Python code for an insertion sort as well.